This is a, a table from a study that we published in 2008 on the strength of the uh, subtalar joint inverter muscles. And we can uh, note here that several of these muscles are agonists. We have the posterior tibialis, which is abbreviated here PT, flexor hallucis longus, FHL, and flexor digitorum longus, FDL. And these deep compartment muscles all are, act at the subtalar joint, but they also have actions deep into the foot, in the midfoot, and the forefoot. But across different studies, uh, people uh, don't know how to attribute um, different contributions of these muscles to the subtalar joint inversion. And so there's some confusion about how they may substitute for each other. And so we uh, basically took off the, the results of five different studies and, and consolidated them. And essentially we were focusing on the PCSA or the anatomic cross-sectional area of these muscles. We can see that across all the different muscles, these are the averages over here to the right. And, and if we kind of think about all of the muscles together as including 100% of the, of the potential for inverters to act, these are the relative percentages attributable to each muscle. And we can see that the posterior tib makes up over 60% of the PCSA. The FHL is about 27% and the FDL even smaller. And so essentially the, P, the posterior tibialis muscle is a, a larger than both of the other two um, put together. And what we're gonna find out in, in addition to that is it also has the largest moment arm. And so that combination makes it the primary uh, subtalar inverter, and it's unlikely that loss of the posterior tib, which does occur clinically, can actually be substituted by hypertrophy of the FHL or the FDL. Consider you'd have to double the size of the FHL, and even in doing so, um, it doesn't have the same moment arm as the posterior tibialis muscle, so it's still even doubling the size wouldn't um, re result in a fully functioning uh, muscle equivalent to the posterior tibialis uh, muscle.